Auburn flips five-star wide receiver Cam Coleman from the Texas A&M Aggies. Let's take a look at this 2024 Auburn recruiting class as we inch closer to signing day on this edition of the Uptempo Podcast. You are now listening to the War Report Podcast Network. Let's go, man. What is up, Auburn family? We're back, baby. We're back. Sorry about missing that Friday episode on you guys, man. Like Blake said, we were a little under the weather, but we are back and we are ready to talk about this big news. Blake, me and you have been talking about it for months. We got to get Cam Coleman. We got to get Cam Coleman. And damn it, we got Cam Coleman. Blake, how are you today, buddy? I'm doing great, man. The positivity around the fan base for the Auburn Tigers, uh, the the positivity uh, in recruiting, and to get a guy like Cam Coleman, uh, who I just never felt like was going to end up at A&M, right? Right. Uh, and you just continue to work and work and work on a player like this, man. Hugh Freeze, uh, Marcus Davis, uh, they deserve all the credit in the world, man. This whole staff – just continuing to grind uh, to show the fan base that uh, we're on the way back. You know, uh, it's 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 it might be a slow grind, uh, and and it might take losing to New Mexico State and Alabama in back to back weeks, but uh, th- they're trying and and they're on the right path. And it seems like we're not done yet, as as Trayvon always says. Uh, the players mm-hmm. seem positive that there's more things to come here in the next couple weeks so uh i'm excited dustin i'm excited uh man you look at these highlights like a guy like cam coleman it's just uh (laughs) auburn hasn't had this right auburn hasn't had this type of player and now you're gonna have him and perry thompson coming in man uh walker white's got to be excited that you have uh, a malcolm simmons a bryce kane a perry thompson a cam coleman it's just through the roof right now, man, and and uh, the talent level is being taken a step further at Auburn, and uh, you know it's just Hugh Freeze is what he's done in recruiting, man, and people out there, Dustin, who want to compare him going six and six in his first year and Harson going six and six, well, this guy's busting his ass on the recruiting trail when the other one wasn't, okay. Right. So that's the difference, man, is, is you got a staff and a head coach who is – they're taking the in-home visits. They're, 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 they're going to uh, – Cadillac was in Leroy, Alabama, a little small town right here north of Mobile, uh, watching some kids Friday night, brother. Like, like, come on, man. This staff is doing it. The last one wouldn't even walk into a high school in the state of Alabama, but would catch a plane to Oregon to recruit a wide receiver. Come on. It's not even close, man. Um, Congratulations to the staff for pulling this flip off. Uh, Like I said, never giving up, never stopping, continuously attacking Cam Coleman, getting him to campus nonstop. And uh, I think that Iron Bowl, even though we lost, uh, it had a lot to do with this. Uh, decision to flip. I think Cam buys into what Hugh is preaching, and obviously you can look at the list of wide receivers that Hugh has developed, and I think Cam said, hey, I could be a DK Metcalf, you know. Uh, I could be a Laquan Treadwell. Uh, So, uh, you know, he's going to play for a great coach, and like I said, man, the positivity around the program, uh, it's sky high right now, you know. I mean, we're going to a bowl game. Recruiting is on another level. I'm just excited to be a freaking Auburn Tiger, Dustin. Yeah. Before I really talk about Cam, you know, obviously the Iron Bowl was such a gut punch to the fans. I mean, you fourth and goal from the 31, you lose that way. I'm still not over it. It, it re it resurfaced the pain did yesterday watching Bama win the SEC championship, right? But um, since that moment, since that weekend. We've had uh, several commitments, right? Like there hasn't the recruiting momentum's only picked up. Mm-hmm. So as much as it hurt, as much as the loss, you know, stung, it was it was always kind of funny to me when people were like, "Oh, Cam Coleman didn't do any interviews after the New Mexico State game. It's a wrap." Again, Hugh Freeze has never sold any of these recruits on. I'm about to win eight nine games this year. Yeah. That hasn't been the pitch. The pitch has consistently been to all these guys, uh, Cam Coleman included, come be part of something special. 
and the pitch to Cam Coleman was a little bit unique. And hey, come be part of something special in your hometown. Mm. Come be part of something special for your hometown team. Obviously, Phoenix City, about forty minutes up the road. Um, and let's let be a part of be a part of something different. You know, and you can go to the Georgias, you can go to the Bamas, you can be, you can go do that. Or you can come be here, and we're going to win just like they're winning, and you can be the Julio Jones. You can be the Mark Ingram. You can be the pillar of this class. And uh, so I think that the consistency of that message, the persistence, just you not stopping, bro. Like, Mm -hmm. he didn't quit. Uh, He didn't commit on a quit on a guy like Jamonte Waller, you know, we uh, a guy like Joe Phillips, who had told Hugh a couple days – before the announce, before Joe Phillips' announcements was set, told you, "Hey, it's Georgia. I'm going to Georgia." And he said, "Let me have one more conversation with you." And now Joe Phillips is locked in in a crucial part of this Auburn class. He's just he recruits um, with this effort, with this fire that we've never seen. And even though uh, I think Gus was a good recruiter, and I think that at times Gus had good recruiters on the staff, he never. There at the end, it started dipping right. But for the for the majority of Gus's tenure, he was a good recruiter. He didn't do the things that were elite, and I feel like eventually in this Cam Coleman, this one, the way it went, the way it went, previous Auburn coaches would at some point kind of given up, or maybe not given up. They would have always kind of had their hands in the fire, mm-hmm. but Hugh never was just full steam ahead. Like, nah, dude, you are coming to Auburn, and you mentioned getting on a plane, the last staff going to Oregon to try to get a trying to get a four star. Well, you've got a plethora of guys in your backyard. And breaking the Phoenix City curse, man. Like finally getting somebody from this football powerhouse, this this blue chip factory. And now you kind of feel like, okay, if you want Upshaw, you can go get him, right? If you want the Mal Walsh up to 25 offensive linemen out of Phoenix City, you can go get him. Now all of a sudden you've opened up that pipeline. And you've opened up a pipeline this year to some crucial the Clay Chalkvilles, you know. Uh uh, what's it? Uh, Caleb Harris is what from Thompson or Thomas, whatever it is. Uh, the seven A power. Um, you've you've really opened up some pipelines to some of the crucial powers in the state of Alabama, and we're working on some guys on there at Sarah Land, Ryan Williams. You know that one's a lot of rumors going up in the air there. We'll figure out what goes on with that one. It's on a day nears. So Hugh Freeze man is really just locked in. He has not given up on guys that are committed to Florida, Alabama, no matter where. He said, listen, I'm coming after you. We could go back to like a, a DeAndre Carter where Texas was really, really pushing. And Hugh said, no, back off. I'm going to get my guy. So that's kind of my thing, Blake, is I look at this and I just say for the future going forward, man, we have a coach that is relentless, that is an absolute dog, and it's got that uh, – if you're Alabama right now, if you're Nick Saban, if you're Kirby Smart, if you're Lane Kiffin, or, you know, if you're this guy that's uh, – any of these guys coming in here, Mississippi State, Texas a and anybody in the SEC, you're looking at Hugh Freeze and you're like, dude, goodness gracious. If you're Sark over there at Texas, you already know because we've been in three or four battles with Texas. For, you know, uh, Speaking of Sarah Lane, we're trying to steal their, their 25 QB commit. Um, so, so Sark knows, man, uh, that, that he's coming over here and he's in some battles with Hugh. I think that this one, and, and these guys already know that Hugh's a dog on the recruiting trail, but this one, man, this, this Cam Coleman commitment, he's the pillar of this 24 class. Now it's the one that we all wanted. To, I mean, all the, all the stuff, man, your backyard, how bad we need outside receivers. That's how big this recruitment is. Blake, me and you haven't even talked about the player that he is mm-hmm. 56 receptions. 1,229 yards with seven TDs, and I've said it once, I'll say it again. He's the best up like player that I've seen up close and personal. Like I know this guy's going to get in, in, a hit in college since since I saw Trent Richardson. It just is in, in, a, in a Julio Jones as well, where you just see it and you go, "There's no way this misses in mm-hmm. college." You know, the pros is a whole different beast, but as far as high school to, to college, man, Cam Coleman could have helped us this year, bro. He could have helped us this year. The guy's catch radius is unreal. He catches everything, Blake. And we've seen – we just saw it this year. I'm not trying to throw shade at our outside receivers, but, like, they didn't get the production done. We go back to the the VAR drop in the end zone in the Iron Bowl. It's not really VAR's game to catch that ball, right? He's an inside guy, and we were kind of having to use in those type type scenarios. So, 
Cam Coleman with Perry Thompson and then a Bryce Kane and a slot Blake. All guys that can go up and make the cat. I mean, we, me and you've seen Bryce a couple times this year go up and get 50 50 balls, right? Mm-hmm. It's not just speed with Bryce. He does have the ability to high point a ball and go up and get it. All these guys make plays, man. These are all game changers in this wide receiver class. Yeah. And, and you know, you got the freak athlete of, of the Malcolm Simmons kid, you know. Um, I feel like he gets overlooked a little bit uh, when, when people talk about these wide receivers coming to Auburn. Um, you know, Bryce Kane, man, down here in Mobile, Alabama a freakish athlete, uh, a stud on the baseball field, uh, can do it all, man. Like, can absolutely go get it. Uh, You know, Perry, we've seen what he can do. Uh, One of the best catches that I've seen (laughs) a high school kid make was this year uh, against Bryce Kane and the Baker Hornets, man. Uh, Look, I saw a comment the other night. I was like, yeah, Perry's not that good. He dropped in the rankings for a reason. But, man, when you look at Perry Thompson's mm, stats, I'm, I'm not trying to down a, a high school kid, but um, he had a he had a sophomore throw into him this year, all right? The, he wasn't ready to play quarterback uh, at the varsity level in high school, and you could tell, all right? Uh, that's no knock on the kid. I just don't think he was ready to play 7A football in the state right. of Alabama. Right. And they were having to find – uh, ways to get Perry the ball if it was from motioning him in the offense um, to, to to hand the ball off or uh, the screen game. And when he's bracketed, double covered, and, and I mean, there was just no way for him to really get yards, man. Um, you know, like me and Dustin, I think the first play when, when we were at the Baker game, you know, they send they send Perry – in motion and and they dump it to him out in the flats and he just gets gang tackled by yeah. six guys, you know, and it's just and like still carried him for four yards. Yeah. You know, yeah. and yeah. I'm just like, look, they're he's not getting to develop routes, man, and, and things like that. So yeah, his numbers uh they're, they're gonna be down. So uh, he's still a freakish athlete, a freakish receiver, can run any route. Uh, and and Cam Coleman, man, uh, the catch and the stiff arm in that video, uh, you know, the the catch uh, in the end zone, that, that's an NFL catch. I mean, he toe taps, gets both feet in. Uh, and and like you said, man, uh, um, Amara Kelly hit the portal, all right? He's leaving. Um, there's – I mean, there's going to be guys – come in from the transfer portal this year at receiver. Um, hopefully, we don't miss uh, in the in the portal. Uh, I feel like Jair Shorter and Shane Hooks were a miss. Bad misses, um, really. Yeah. and um, But I think some of these guys can come in in year one, and they can produce. And I feel like it's uh, – I feel like the opportunity is there, but I see guys like – uh, Camden Brown, you know, we talked about him, him saying, hey, I'm not going to join another team. I'm going to stay with this team and we will be the winning team, you know. So um, hopefully these guys can put in the work as a group and collectively uh, bring the Auburn wide receiver core back uh, and and us just not be, you know, so so, so inept at the position that, uh, you know, we constantly have to get on and say that we're not getting space and we're not running the right routes. And, um, you know, we can't make catches in traffic. And that's one big thing, man, is uh, I just felt like sometimes this year when Peyton did deliver a good ball, uh, we just – we couldn't come up with the catch. Yeah, and, Georgia game. Yeah, Georgia game, uh, Alabama game. And of all people, Rivaldo in that Alabama game, I felt like he, he dropped a couple – uh, that yeah. were crucial, including Peyton's first throw, who's standing out of bounds. Like, uh, we just we got to be better at that position. But I feel like this is just uh, it's it's just the beginning, Dustin. Yeah. So let's look at this class, Blake, and let's talk about some of the studs, right? So when you look at um, you look at some of the the big time gets, DeAndre Carter, 
position of need. You know that you need to add to offensive line. <clears throat> Waller, Phillips, Jamonte Waller and Joseph Phillips, two big time edge rushers that every single school in the country was. I mentioned earlier that uh, Phillips had actually told Hugh on like, I think it was like a Monday that I'm going with the Georgia within that 48 hours before his announcement. He's going to Auburn and he stayed locked in ever since. Uh, linebackers. Our linebackers have played well this year. Shout out to Josh Aldridge, but he hasn't had much to work with, right? I mean, Larry Nixon and Eugene Asante, and then whenever Austin Keys came back, a ton of reps. And I don't want to, you know, it is what it is, but at this point, you know, when Wesley Steiner's out there, that you're you're lacking depth. Um, so there's not whole, just not a lot of guys out there. And what have we done? Gone and got a guy like DJ Barber, just a baller, bro, an absolute baller that anybody in the country would have uh, would have wanted. So. Um, defensive line, we're lacking depth. TJ Lindsey, Texas pushing for him hard. Looks like we're going to be able to keep him in the boat. We're still really hard on a guy like LJ McCray. We pull this LJ McCray thing off, and all of a sudden this class is looking. This class is, is knocking on the door of a, a top six, top five class because that Cam Coleman, uh, that top ten player, will shoot you up a whole bunch. But, Blake, just looking at these positions of need, obviously your, your quarterback uh, – your quarterback every year is going to be an important part of your class, going to be a big – you want to get your quarterback in early, and we did. We beat out Clemson, who I know hasn't had the best year, but when you look at Clemson's program over the last five years, much more established, much better recruiting than we have been. So it's a big-time it's a big time win um, early in Hughes' tenure to get Walker White on board. He's been crucial in landing all these guys. So, Blake, just kind of speak on Hughes' ability and the staff's ability to pinpoint areas of need and then not having the success on the field, still be able to win those battles and sell them on the vision. Yeah, you know, I, I feel like the – I'll start with Walker, right? Um, I feel like him pinning down Walker and getting him in this class and getting Walker to start recruiting through social media and being a big vocal point with this class was a big deal to me. Um, and you and you saw it at the Iron Bowl. Dude was wearing a sweatshirt saying, hey, this is who Auburn needs on the back. Right, right. I, I mean, the, the kid hasn't stopped. He's literally every day on Twitter recruiting for Auburn football. Um, you know, I know people might have their doubts about Walker White, whatever, you know. Um, you can say he plays in a, in a weak league or whatever. I don't, I don't care. Uh, the kid can spin it. When you flip on the tape, he can, he can throw the football, period. That's all that matters to me. Um, I feel like looking at the trenches, all right, with O-line and D-line, all right, Hugh knows that in this league, it starts there. If you want to win, it starts there. Look at yesterday, all right? I want to make a real quick example, all right? Alabama and Georgia played in the SEC championship game, all right? What happened in that football game? that led to Alabama's success. Alabama established the run game. Mm -hmm. Alabama said, hey, we're going to run the football right down your throat. All right? And that's what happened. Alabama's O-line had taken a lot of criticism all year, and uh, they got better throughout the year. And that's the first time I've seen Georgia get moved around like that in a long time, in a long, long time, the first time. Um. And so I think Hugh understands that. And I know the class is thin in the 24 year and all that, but you look at the 25 class, Dustin, and I know you're locked in on those names and, and, and Auburn is hammering the trenches in the 25 class. Mm -hmm. And that's what it takes. I mean, you yeah, so look at this. Yeah, I'm going to pull them up. So we've got uh looking at the 25 class. And the reason for this guys is we had like, we had Dukes on the other day and it just, he said it. In the, in the states of Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, the fertile recruiting grounds for Auburn, the offensive and defensive linemen, it's a rarity, but this year, this 24 class, it's just really thin. And then mm -hmm. Hugh having the having the late start, a lot of these guys are already committed to the Georgia's Alabamas. Mm -hmm. And to their credit, man, the uh, the especially the offensive linemen, they're hard to flip. Commitment means something to a lot of those guys down there, especially on the O-line. But looking at 25, you've got uh, Kendarius Riddick, who is a top 100 player nationally. Um, but he's a safety out of Thomasville, Georgia. And then you've got Ja'Kayla Falk, uh, Keldrick's brother of the edge. You've got Jordan Crawford, defensive lineman. You've got Malik Autry, defensive lineman. Kalen Edwards, defensive lineman. You've got Ryan G, the tight end. And then Spencer Dowlin, offensive lineman. 
So <laughs> trench heavy, Blake. Trench heavy in that twenty five class. Yeah, and and you see at the linebacker at the linebacking core, man. Uh, like you said, uh, J- Josh Aldridge and and just th- the job that he did this year. Um, like I said, one of the most heavily criticized position groups um, coming into the year, and I feel like we saw some of the best progress in that room. Uh, and and you know, I, I look at Auburn fans, and and they're saying, "Hey, we need we need help at DB." All right, we're losing a lot of DBs. We are. Uh, we know Hugh and the staff and and Zach Etheridge are going to hammer uh, that room. They're going to go get a couple guys in the portal, but we have talent back there. We have talent. Uh, there's a guy, uh, Kay and Lee. All right, he, he got on the field this year as a freshman. Uh, he's going to uh, hold things down uh, over on that island. Uh, I feel like he is going to have a heck of a career as an Auburn Tiger. Look, this staff, they know the needs. All right. They're going to attack the needs in the portal. We look at quarterback. Everybody's like, oh, Dustin, what are we doing at quarterback? Well, look, this is what Auburn's going to do at quarterback. Walker White is not coming in as a freshman to start. Hmm. Right. I don't, I don't, you know, it's nothing against Walker White, but he needs to sit and learn. Uh, you look at the percentages of a true freshman coming in and starting, uh, and, and the success is it's just not there. Right. And, um, you know, Bo struggled in 2019, true freshman, uh, struggled. You could see you were like, man, dude, uh, if Stidham would have come back, uh, mm. this team would have been – this team would have been real. Right. So, you're going to go get a portal quarterback. I don't know who it is. Like, everybody's like Grayson McCall, Riley Leonard, Cam Ward. I don't know. I don't know who it is. All right. Uh, and to be honest with you, I don't really care right now uh, until things start thinning out. You know, and until we start hearing, uh, because I just feel like everybody that hits the portal, everybody's like, oh, that's him. You know, that's and, the guy. Yeah. And I'm just like, all right, whatever. Um, but whoever we go get, they're going to come in here and they're going to compete with Peyton Thorne for the starting quarterback job. And I think that's Hughes' vision. I think that's his plan. Uh, and and you got to be excited about that, man. And like he's hammering the position needs and, and he's going and getting the job done and he knows where we're thin at. He knows it's trenches. He knows you got to go get some linebackers. He knows that we're losing some crucial DBs. All right. And we got to go get those positions. Right? You're going to, you're going to go out to wide receiver and you're going to get a couple of those. All right. It's just, it's just part of it, man. Auburn's going to have to flip their roster. Uh, and you know, expectations, We'll talk about it in, in, on another day for a, another episode. But uh, people are going to come in here and want to win 10 games next year. And we just got to be patient, man. We got to be patient and trust this coaching staff uh, because they're getting the job done on the recruiting trail. And it's going to take time, man. It, like People really have to understand in today's age, we live in a what for what have you done for me now? All right. What have you done for me lately? Like uh, it's it's quick success. If you don't have immediate success, you're fired. And we got to go back to like when me and you were growing up, Dustin, uh, a coach used to get minimum four years. All right. A coach used to get four years. And after that fourth year, dog, if you hadn't done anything, then you were out. Now it's like Billy Napier is down at Florida. And he's having a couple people decommit, and they're like, hey, we need to fire this guy. All right? yeah. And he's in year two. And they're like, well, yeah, we need to fire him. We need and to that fire schedule him. next year ain't doing Billy no favors, boy. Oh, man, <laughs> that thing is brutal, dog. I mean, that – that them and Oklahoma have the two hardest mm-hmm. schedules in the SEC, man. Like, that is tough. Um, yeah, it's tough. Yeah. And, yeah, if, if Billy doesn't do anything next year – uh, third year, he's probably out at Florida. But um, you, you got to – you really – like you made this point to me the other day is like you really look at that 25 class and you kind of put your finger on it and say, hey, that's, that's the one, right, that you're really looking at the future and saying, hey, this is going to be the class that Hugh – uh, leaves his mark on all right. like when these guys get there that's when you're going to start seeing the success build up 
for the Auburn Tigers. Uh, and I think that was a great point from you. Uh, and I and I truly believe that, man, because it's a it's really just a marathon, man, and not a sprint. And I know people want to win. I know people want to get back to, you know, nine, ten win seasons. And and I do myself. Uh, but we got to uh, we got to keep recruiting, man. We got to keep getting on the trail. And and the staff's doing it. You know, I mean, you just look at the hourglass. Uh, tweet from Perry and the four out of five and everything, bro. If they get the freeze five, if Ryan Williams uh, flips to to Auburn, this program, this program is on another level, man. Like if you get that kid, he's, he's the greatest thing I've seen since Julio Jones. Like he made a play Friday night, uh, I have no idea. I have no clue how he he caught the ball, all right? Had three guys and just absolutely took all three of their ankles, bro. And and <laughs> hit the sideline. He hit the sideline to the house. All right. I, I I said, what just happened? All right. Like it was insane. It's insane. I, I watched him take a punt at Theodore. I watched him field a punt at Theodore last year. Theodore, it was state semifinals, seven, uh, 6A ball. Um, fields a punt. Guy immediately in his face, shakes him, says, oh, get off me. All right. Just out the gate, finds a seam, hits it to the sideline, to the house, and it was like that, bro. It happened like that. Like, right. I was just like, this kid's unreal. And they were like, you know, sophomore. And I'm like, sophomore? <laughs> like, you know? And uh, yeah. and now they're talking about him reclassifying and stuff, you know? Like, um, and people ask me, is, is him reclassifying a good thing for Auburn? And I've heard people say no. It's not because you want to keep uh, getting in his ear and you want to keep getting in his ear. Uh, I think him reclassifying is a good thing for Auburn. Um, and the reason I say that is because you're in his ear right now. Momentum's hot. Yeah. Momentum's hot. You just flipped Cam Coleman. Um, a big thing that I did hear him say the other day is Cam Coleman, Perry Thompson, Ryan Williams, means he's not getting double teamed. Mm. All right? And and I think that's a big deal for him, you know? Uh, you got Perry to flip. You got Cam to flip. Uh, him not getting double teamed is a big deal. Walker White can get the ball out, or whoever's at quarterback can get the ball out to him, and uh, and he can have success. So, Man, Hugh Freeze and the staff can't say enough about them. Uh, it's electric right now. And if you're an Auburn fan, you got to feel excited. Uh, you got to be pumped up uh, like Dustin brought the, the episode in today, the intro. You got to be excited. You got you yeah. got to have the fire, man. You got to have that passion. Because when you look at the way that it's gone over the past five or six years, yes, the record this year at 6-6 six six isn't much different. But the difference is the recruiting trail. And this is, this is where it starts. And this is why – Auburn football is where it is. Auburn football is where it is because of neglecting the offensive line. That's where it started. It started in about 2017. On recruiting, we started neglecting the offensive line there. Yep. And it was just downhill thing. And then we got comfortable with the with the 2019 defensive line. And we said, well, damn, we've got 10 guys that we can rotate in right now. But it only works that way if you continue to recruit at that <laughs> level. And – from that point on, we quit doing at the defensive line. So that's why now, a couple years down the road here, three, four years down the road from that, you see some top-end talent, but no depth. Yeah. Because you haven't attacked it the way you need to attack it. And yeah. that's the thing about Hugh Freeze is that I've never doubted the competitive fire and the want to win at Auburn. And I think that you bring Hugh Freeze in to be your coach, for this next month or two, because I think he's a great offensive mind. Um, I think a lot of the issues that you saw this year offensively, uh, they got cleaned up after 
the Ole Miss game when Hugh Freeze took over the offense. Yeah. So the first half of the season, I just – is it on Hugh because he's the head coach? Sure, but the point I'm making is when we started running Hugh's offense, the offense looked different. So I think that all that I think that Hugh Freeze is a great offensive head coach, but you bring Hugh Freeze to Auburn because he's a recruiter. That's what he does. Hmm. So this next month of finishing out up here until the 20th, finishing out this this class, the 24 class, you're gonna have obviously it's a we're gonna have some 25 guys pop because we're really close on a lot of those guys, um, and then the portal. And you you brought up some of the guys on the outside receiver position that we missed in the portal. We need to hit on one of those this year because as much as I love this wide receiver hall that we're bringing in, they're still going to be all freshmen. Now, I think Cam Coleman's day one. I think Perry Thompson, day one. I don't know about Malcolm Simmons. I don't know about Bryce Kane. Um, you know, we'll see how that goes. Ryan Williams, you know, if he, we'll see how that goes because – I, you what you said about most talented people people you've ever seen up close. I've heard that a bunch. Um, my question would be reclassifying. He's still a really young guy. Is he ready to contribute at a big time level day one as a really really young guy? And Kim Coleman is super young um, for this class. He's going to turn eighteen at Auburn type thing. So uh, kind of like we had mentioned as far as expectations going into next year, what does the production look like out of the wide receiver room next year? I don't know. But, man, it, like looking at the future, looking at this class that you're bringing in. And the, here's my thing, too, Blake. You miss, right? Like sometimes in recruiting, these guys don't pan out. But mm -hmm. if you bring in Ryan Williams, Cam Coleman, and Perry Thompson, one of them's going to hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? Like, two of them hit. <laughs> right. right. So, I mean, it's just, so uh, that, that part of it as well, if you stack them up. So, right now for us, man, this is this next month or two, portal all that you mentioned qb really interested to see how that goes because Peyton thorne will be coming back but everyone we've all agreed that you're going to bring in somebody and i think that if Peyton thorne would have played if Peyton thorne would have played the first half of the season the way that he did post all miss game yeah. i still think you're bringing in another guy i just think that's the nature of the beast nowadays i think that you're always going to be looking to upgrade specifically at that qb position if i can go find a guy in the portal, I'm going to do it. And you made a point about a month ago that uh, it really, really uh, settles into a, what we got going on here now. Spencer Sanders at Ole Miss. He didn't ultimately play, but it appears to have raised the level of Jackson Dart's play. Yep. And also, if Jackson Dart would have got hurt, then you would have had a guy that started 40-something games, regardless of how you feel about his ability. You're not, you're not going into it going, okay, he's seen deer in the headlights here, right? So um, we're going to add an another guy there. Me and you both kind of wanted to be Cam Ward as far as the guys that are out there on the table right now. I know that you obviously wouldn't mind seeing your Mobile guy there and Riley Leonard show up. So we'll just kind of see how all that plays out. Um, if you are a portal QB, it looks a little bit more enticing now. It looks mm -hmm. a little bit more enticing now. And um, if you're, you know, if we're hard after the 2025 uh, Sarah Land QB that was committed to Texas, uh, Lacey, it looks a little more enticing now, doesn't it? Look at the guys you'll be throwing to. And if you're the 25 QB, you can make the argument you can make the pitch to him that these receivers will be a little more polished and ready for you. So, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of stuff to look at Blake and it's all, it's all positive. And it's nice to be sitting here eight days after that crushing iron bowl and still being able to look at this and say, Hey man, we, we're going to be okay. And we're bringing in the guys now to where maybe it, we don't even have to be in that scenario. Cause maybe we just kicked your ass all game. <laughs> man. Uh, you know, one thing I'll say is, Speaking on Hugh Freeze, um, a big thing that stood out to me, and, and I think I said this last Tuesday night, is, um, you know, that press conference on Monday mm -hmm. after the Iron Bowl, after the crushing defeat, uh, that just kind of showed that he understands the task at hand. Like, he understands where the Auburn fan base is at. Uh, he understands uh, the pain that Auburn fans are feeling because you have all these people, man. Like we see it here in our comments. They're like, Oh, what has Auburn ever been? Stop playing, man. Stop playing. Like, honestly, stop playing. Like, you know what Auburn's been like. Auburn has won plenty in my lifetime. All right. They can do it again. They can get back to that. All right. Um, and I'm not sitting here saying that Auburn needs to be this, 
you know, program like Alabama where they win 11 games a year, or t- they go, you know, 12 and one all the time and everything. No, what I'm saying is Auburn, need, Auburn needs to mirror LSU, all right, where LSU is at nine and three this year, and they're like, hey, man, like, that's not good enough, all right? We did that last year, and we and we won the West, and we got pounded in Atlanta. Come on, Brian. Like, you know, that's what Auburn needs to be, man, where a down year is nine and three because that's what it used to be. When Auburn went nine and three, we were like, dang, man, you know, like, mm, like that's not good enough, you know. Like, we got to raise the bar. We got to get back to that 10-win season. Um, but I think Hugh gets it, and I think Hugh understands the job. And, like, that was a big deal to me, him throwing that press conference and and him basically just starting it off, like, apologizing to the fans. And he was like, hey, I didn't get the job done. Like, I know how big this game is, and and I didn't I didn't get the job done. But I can promise you, uh, you know, that, that crap won't ever happen again. And uh, so I, I think we got the right guy, man, and, and the talent that he's bringing in – his relentless effort to just not give up um, and continue to attack, continue to go after kids. Um, it, it speaks volumes to uh, his growth as a, as a coach, as a recruiter, um, and, and him just understanding the moment and, and, the, and the place that he's at. So, And it goes for the entire staff, man. It's not just you. Uh, it's, it's like Marcus Davis, man. Like, like we saw him in person at, at yeah. Foley that night you know uh marcus was look the guy wasn't a statue at foley high school like he was making his rounds uh i mean he was just constantly moving watching these guys um and 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 bryce and perry were playing against each other and you know he was getting uh he was getting all up in it man he was he was making his way he was talking to people uh you know getting the connections and everything you could tell marcus understood how to recruit uh, so, uh, you know, it, it's it's bleeding off onto the entire staff, man, and, and I'm happy and excited for Auburn football in the future, Dustin. Yeah, and it, it's um, I'll kind of finish out the episode with this, Blake. It's not uh, that's why you have guys like Cadillac and Trevon Reed and Zach Ethers. I think those guys have been crucial to Hughes first year because Auburn is a unique place, and it was crucial to have some people like Cadillac and Zach that were not only understand Auburn but were also here on the last staff. So they can say, hey, this is what was wrong, but I've also been here when Auburn was right. Mm-hmm. So I know I know where we're at. I know where we need to be and kind of guide Hugh through what it is to be the Auburn head coach because every university, especially in the SEC, is different. Um, I thought it was so funny, Blake, when people were, were talking about Dan Campbell and Texas A&M. There is not a way in hell yeah. that a NFL coach – in, t- in today's football climate, is going to come down and deal with NIL and Portal and everything else. He is winning games in the NFC North. He is not about to come down and deal with a whole bunch of college station boosters. That was just always crazy to me. So I, I said that point to say, man, there's a whole lot that goes into being Auburn's coach. Us as a fan base, we can be demanding. We can be a little hard to handle type thing. For To have those guys in there to kind of show you – through this first year as Auburn's coach, the specific challenges, the unique challenges that it are to be at Auburn. And then um, I got to shout out Bruce Pearl, Blake, because we're not in this position. These players like Cam Coleman and Perry Thompson and DeAndre Carter and Jamonte Waller, they cost money. They cost money. And we're not in this position if people behind the scenes like Bruce Pearl, um, like Butch Thompson, if the whole university wasn't bought in with on to victory to the NIL effort and understanding that some of this money need to be funneled toward football recruiting. And, you know, like Bruce Pearl is basketball only facility. He said, let's put this on hold and let's get this NIL right because the university as a whole needs to have the NIL right. So um, when you, when you hear words like alignment, that's what it means. It's everybody on board. Hey, Hugh, what do you need, man? The money people. Hey, what do you need to get Cam Coleman? Okay. Well, money won't be the reason we lose them. And with the with the uh, with all these top prospects, I feel like money's about the same. You know, if Bama wants a guy, they're going to offer him what they're going to offer him. And if Auburn wants him hard enough, they're going to offer him the same thing. LSU, that type deal. But to have the money, to have the structure in place, is really important. And I'm proud of Auburn as a whole, the whole university for having all their ducks in a row and being able to get a guy like Cam Coleman because it's not easy in today's age. It's just not. Um, so, so this is just a. Uh, 
this is a game changer. When I saw when I saw this scroll across my Twitter, I was like, man, um, this is this is gonna be a day that we look back on at Auburn fans and say, hey, I remember that day. Because uh, this guy's going to score a lot of touchdowns at Auburn. Perry Thompson's going to score a lot of touchdowns beside him. I don't know what that's going to mean when you have 4 2 9, 40 Bryce Kane in the slot. Uh, there's a lot of fun times ahead, man. I just can't wait. So we appreciate everybody watching the video. Um, this Tuesday night at 7 p.m., we're going to do our award show. You know, best best defensive player of the year, best offensive player of the year, MVPs, all that kind of thing. Uh, great out the coaches and that whole deal. So uh, be a part of that. We definitely want you guys to tap in and give us your opinions there. If you have not liked the video, do that. Subscribe to the channel. We tip off here as we're recording this here. It's uh, Sunday morning. We're going to tip off at Appalachian State soon. You guys will be watching this after the Appalachian State game, but – Tons of basketball content coming as basketball season uh, gets heated up. The boys are looking good. I'm really excited about the team that we have on the hardware this year, Blake. So be on the lookout for that, man. As football winds down, we will definitely tune up the basketball. But we're not going to lay off this recruiting because there's tons of tons of information that will be coming out in these next few weeks, man. Hugh and this staff is going to finish strong. So like I said, man, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to that channel. And we'll see you guys Tuesday night. It'll be fun, man. Award show. We'll see you all there. War Damn Eagle. War Eagle, baby.